welcome to Talk Art. I'm Sally Rain, and I'll be your host as we delve into the world of the artist and the art that's all around us. Talk Art is sponsored by the Silicon Valley Open Studios. During the first three weekends in May, hundreds of local artists open our studios to the public. For more information, you can go to the website svos.org. Our guest on Talk Art, John Ediger, is a watercolorist who specializes in painting old, rusty machinery and aged wood in a beautifully realistic manner. And he's here to demonstrate some of his techniques. So welcome, John. Well, thank you, Sally. So tell us a little bit about your background. How did you become interested in art and develop your techniques? Well, I started out by drawing. I um, was sitting at work one day in my job my career, kind of a boring career, but not too boring. And uh, I looked around me and I thought, you know, I'd, I'd like to draw some of this stuff and I don't know why. Oh, interesting. And so I started drawing and I drew the people and I drew machinery and, and uh, I drew for about, uh, that's when I was about 55. And I drew everything for about eight years. Wow. Then I discovered watercolors, and the rest is history. <laughs> so what do you base your techniques on? Because you get very realistic effects in the watercolor, which is a technically demanding medium, and then the details are very fine. What is your theory or your practice? Well, I just I paint what I see. And then, of course, my mentor, Margaret Washington, uh, when I took lessons from her starting in 2010, she taught me, and she's a very realistic painter. Mm -hmm. So I, I guess I learned from her. And then I tried to develop my own style, you know, merging, it's called fusion, I guess, with uh, very realistic style and uh, the kind of abstract, a little bit abstract in there. Sort of in your background right. a little bit? Right. Interesting. Yeah. So you mentioned when we were talking about drawing on the right side of the brain. Yes. So in the techniques that, and it's a book by um, Betty Edwards. Can you yes. tell us a little bit about that and how that influences your style? Well, when I first started drawing, that was the first drawing book I bought, you know, and I, uh, my wife and I went to Barnes and Noble and looked through all the books and I was looking for a drawing book and, and I picked one up that looked okay and then of course she found one that was better mm -hmm. so I bought that one and it was wonderful it's a wonderful book and, and she teaches you how to uh, blind contour drawing for instance you know where you kind of close your eyes and not close your eyes you don't look at your paper oh yeah and you look at the thing you're drawing and just kind of you picture that you're drawing it in your mind interesting and that helps well, you brought some of your rusty painting images, so let's take a look at those now and you can tell us a little bit about your technique and how it works. They're beautiful. Okay. Oh, that's uh, one I recently did. That was on my uh, a road trip I took to Zion and I went past uh, 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 this ghost town. And uh, I went to the ghost town and I walked around and it was uh, about 38 degrees and so I didn't sketch much <laughs> but what I did was I took a lot of pictures and this was this car has been done a lot there but I had to do it myself I just I love that rusty old car well the shadows make it look such so realistic on the car itself well look at those shadows wow yeah this was one of my first paintings this was uh, uh, my wife and I and my dog Chewy we were on our way to uh, Phoenix, Arizona, and we needed a rest stop, of course, and uh, we stopped at this little, oh gosh, how would I explain it? It's a, it's a rest stop, but you know, they see the two-headed snake, you know, type mm -hmm. of thing. And so I was out walking the dog, and I walked around the corner, and there they were, just like that. I called it old friends because uh, they're like two old, trucks talking to each other you know remember when i used to have a headlight yeah. yeah what time of day was that that was in in the early afternoon 
getting towards late afternoon. Yeah, it was, the shadows were very long. And I really, I love the shadows. Yeah, you do a beautiful job of Thank that. Thank you. This one was up in Pope Valley. I don't know, many people don't know where Pope Valley is. It's up near Calistoga in Northern California. And it was a tractor graveyard. Wow. And it was full of old rusty tractors. What attracts you to the old machinery and painting it like oh, that? That goes way back. When I was a little kid, I used to go to my grandfather's farm and I'd just run all over. He had old rusty tractors back then. <laughs> so I'd just climb all over them. I just love the old rust. Just, it's a beauty. You know, it's, it's, it has a character. And, you know, they're old things. Yeah. And this, this, was, this was on my way to Oregon. Um, I was on another trip to paint lighthouses, but uh, I was going up Highway 5, and I looked to the right off the highway, and I thought, oh, my God, there were about 100 tractors oh my goodness. lined up. And so I almost... And you, you take pictures of them. Did you intentionally t do the short field of focus there? I didn't. No, not... I didn't... I just took the picture, and I, I painted that in. Okay. Because that, want... that makes the detail really stand out beautifully. Yeah, that's that's my earlier comment about the fusion of uh, oh, okay. abstract and, and realism, is you don't, you can have both. And the background was just kind of a splash of paint. You know, out of focus, so well, to speak. It really sets it off well. It does, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> this was uh, my granddaughter and I were at uh, old auto show in San Jose, and this was an old uh, flying Merkel motorcycle. I never heard of it before, and it was running. The guy was driving it around, and and uh, it was uh, there were competition with the early Har Harley Davidsons. This is about 1911. So do you sketch the details in I do. first, like I do. in as much detail as is there, or do you do the detail with the paint? A little both. Okay. A little both, yeah. That's beautiful. Thank you. This was up in uh, Mendocino. We were staying at a B and B up there, and, and I walk around, and I just this was just something that was hanging off a wall, and it was beautiful. I, you know, an old old ship hoist or something. Who knows? Who knows the history behind it? Well, you really, the shadows in your painting really are what make it look so realistic. Well, shadows are very important, I think. You know, they, they, just, they make the painting. Yeah, they're, they're not easy to do in watercolor. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Sally. This was one of the old friends, and uh, I just had to do this. There was rust everywhere in this, and I, I enhanced it a little bit. What made, do you mean enhanced it? I made it a little oranger and more rusty looking. You know, more color to it. Rust has a lot of color in it, a lot of orange, I guess, you know, but it's a very, you know, a lot of bright orange in there. Right. And the wood, on the, yeah. And this, <laughs> one of my favorites, this was an old barn I ran across in Fremont. And I was... On another... <laughs> That's not what I picture when I think of Fremont. <laughs> no, no. This is in the hills um, east of Fremont, but it was still Fremont, I think. I was driving up a road off of Niles Canyon Road. And, you know, this part of California is fraught with all kinds of nice little roads that go up into the country still to this day. So I could, uh, and so this thing was uh, part of a barn and, you know, and I, and I uh, just, and this was in San Juan Batista. It's one of my favorite missions. Oh, yes. Yeah. And, uh, um, and this was just an old lock that was uh, falling over. And I just love painting old locks, too. <laughs> yeah, the rest So is... now... Yeah, so you're going to demonstrate how you create I've got this that beautiful rust. I've got a similar picture down my, on my uh, easel now. And I'll show you. I've done the wood partially. It's not, it's not finished yet. I just started this at home. And I left the rust out, so I've got a couple of nails that are rusty, but most of the rust is out. So the way I mix rust is I take Payne's Gray and put a nice puddle of Payne's Gray. 
Yeah. A lot of people don't like Payne's Gray, but I do. And it's got a lot of blue in it. A lot of blue in Payne's Gray. Yeah, it's almost a blue. And so then I take a, a puddle of light red, Winsor Newton light red. You could always, in then the, the topper is bright orange. So I get a base going. I'll get a, a base of rust. And I do a lot of mixing on the paper. Oh, so not on your palette. Yeah, I do it on the palette and, and the paper, too. So I want a, a good brown rust, but in, in variegated. Variga variegation is very important because it's not the same color. Even if it is, you don't want it to be. <laughs> <laughs> right? Well, how would you get shadows if it were all the same color? Yeah, it's not exciting. So here you can see the base kind of forming. You put a little dark in there. See a little dark in there? That, that works pretty good. Now, let me go over here and do this part, too. Get a lot of brown, brown rust. This is boring rust. So did you mask that area off? Be no. From no. before I, you I just paint left around it. it. Okay. Okay. Maskings, I, I do mask certain things, but I don't like to use... Masking fluid uh, rips the paper in tiny micro, micro rips. Oh. And it's harder to paint on it. So let me go around here, and then I'll. I, so then I'll go back, and I have my little puddles here. But then I'll go back and get some thicker paint, right out of the wells, some tube paint, and go in there and just you know make some squiggles, get some texture going, and it's just going in and out with the paint. So now, so do you, you're working from a photograph. Yes, I am. Yeah. So you have something to refer to for the yeah, I'm, texture. Yeah, I'm looking at this beautiful. Look at this right here. Uh -huh. Beautiful orange rust. You know that's just that's the ticket. See that orange coming in there. And so we'll make this whole thing. I need a little thicker paint in there. So you see what I'm doing is I'm dipping into the thick paint, into the wet paint. This is called wet and wet painting. And what? it's in, in the paint commingles. And you get really nice texture. And also the paper I'm using is a very rough paper. It's uh, Arches, 140 pound rough. And it's still on the pad, which is keeping it straight. Yeah. Yeah, it's on the pad. I, I paint with pads a lot. I paint with other papers, too, but not too much. I, I stick with arches. What type of brushes do you like? This is a uh, silver black velvet. It's a squirrel combination, squirrel and uh, synthetic. It's very good. Look at the point on that. See, I don't know if they could see that. <laughs> it, it keeps a point. It keeps the point. Now, the other two brushes I paint with a lot are Kalinsky Sable, Winsor Newton Series 7. They're beautiful brushes, but they're not as stiff. They don't have the, the rebound of the squirrel, but they're good for detail. So I'll keep going here, keep getting the rust a little darker and and I'll put the shadows in. You see the shadows here. See the sh in the shadows in the spider web. They'll come in at the last and get all the painting done first. But you left a space for the sp spider. What's that? You left a space for the spider web. Is that how you right do here. that? Right here. So yeah. the spider web is the paper itself. Oh yeah, it's white. The white of the paper. Wow. Yeah, it's negative painting. Negative painting with watercolors. Watercolor and negative painting kind of go hand in hand. You know, you really do a lot of negative painting, and sometimes I'll go over the mark, so to say, color outside the lines. So I got my Viva paper towel. <laughs> Is that your eraser? That's my eraser, yeah. <laughs> so let's keep going with some more rust here. That's starting to look pretty rusty, I think. And uh, 
The lock is, we don't do the lock two here. There we go, get some. Sometimes when you pick up the paint, a little thick paint, and you can get a little thick on this end and another color on that end, and, and there's actually a name for that, but I don't know what it is. So I guess I don't know a lot of things. <laughs> So just keep going and, and, and as it dries, it'll, it does, it'll act differently. So you, will keep, you can keep painting to a certain point and then at a certain point you have to stop. You have to stop and let it dry thoroughly before you can start painting again. So you work in layers on your paintings? I do, I do. Uh, normally called glazes. And so when this dries, I could do another glaze on it. I do what I'm doing now, only, and it'll make it darker. Thicker paint, and it'll get darker, if I want it to get darker. But right now what I'm doing, I'm working in kind of wet and wet layers. And you always put thicker paint over already wet. Because if I went in with water now, or thinner paint, it would cause a cauliflower. What is a cauliflower? No, I could show you. <laughs> well, you don't have to. Just no, that's all right. Cauliflowers sometimes are fun. What it does, it'll push the paint out of the way, and, and it'll look like a little uh -huh. a mark, a cauliflower mark. It'll 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 make a horrible looking thing here. So that's all right. <laughs> So what step are you at in this painting? How many more layers do you think you would do before okay, you finish it? Okay, what I would it? do next, okay, I'm going to leave this because I want that more yellow. So I'm going to paint around that for now. And I can come back later and the, the thing, you let it dry and come back and do anything. This is a cauliflower right here. See that? So, ah. oh, I even did one unintentionally there. So I'm going to let this dry a little bit. So what I would do to finish this painting is, see, I still have wood to finish up here. Yes. The, the grains, and, and I've got some hammer marks here that weren't in the picture, but I wanted to put them in. So we would let this dry and then keep, you know, Going. Okay, well, you have some other images of other scenery that you've painted, yes, mission I do. scenes. So let's take a look at those now, and you can talk a little bit about some of the other work that okay. you do. Okay, I would love to. So this is a mission with beautiful flowers. Oh. Look at well, that. Thank you, thank you. That's uh, Mission San Luis, no, San Juan Batista. It's my favorite mission. And this is the doorway. It's called Angel's Rest because that's the doorway to the graveyard. Uh -huh. Where I don't know who's buried there. <laughs> I assume maybe a lot of fathers and brothers and maybe some Indians. Who knows? <laughs> anyway, so this, this is my favorite. And that, that was a big rose garden they had there. So this is the entrance to the to the hallway at San Juan Batista. It looks like you're using some rust color in your I painting. Am. I am. <laughs> There's rust everywhere. Rust everywhere. This was in the fall, so there were a lot of fall colors. When in the shadows as they go down that walkway. Yeah. That's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. This is San Juan Batista again. I have a lot of San Juan Batista. And since I did this, they've torn out, they, they keep redoing everything, these missions. They keep redoing the landscaping. Huh. So these roses are gone. Oh. Yeah, which to me is too bad. Well, talk a little bit about the light in this one, because you have very white, and the sky is really white. Yeah. That shadow yeah. is beautiful. Yeah. So talk a, bit, a little bit about how you well, did that. Well, that. that shadow has a lot of color in it. It shows blue and orange, and uh, you know, and the roof tiles, it kind of, it goes with the roof tiles, complements the roof tiles. And, but the, that was about noon, I think, a little after noon. It was very warm, warm uh, uh, material on the, on the bell tower. 
And I actually mixed a little yellow on the white. It's not mm -hmm. pure white. It's, right. it's the little yellow there and a little blue at the top from the sky reflection. Interesting. So you took all of that into account. Oh, yeah, yeah. Now, this one is really blue on the facade of the front. Yeah. And then it goes down. As it goes down, it gets really uh, orangey, orange. And this, this is, a, and this the, is San Diego. Yeah. And then the wall is almost like purple. Yeah. Or... yeah, it's a lot of purple. There's a lot of purple in shadows. There's a lot of orange in shadows and uh, a lot of blue. So, you know, you just kind of mix all those together as you go down. So uh, this was in Pleasanton, California, uh, an old adobe barn. And I just love the way that flower kind of blew up out of the window. <laughs> whoever, whoever planted that in the bathtub with the, with the succulents in it. Yeah. And this is, was downtown Pleasanton. And I love, I love the way the colors of the succulents. This is a really, another really warm day. So you seem to like, like details. A lot of your paintings are like very cropped interesting details of buildings and places. Thank you, yeah. This, this, if you could see in the shadow too, look at the red in the shadow. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, because that's reflected off the red awning, you know, and so when, you, when you're dealing with colors, some people just put down black shadows. No, no. no. Most people don't, most good watercolors don't. Yeah, but you know, it's something you learn. Right, and practice, I suppose. Right. Exactly. Oh, this is my grapes from uh, Gilroy. I was down in Gilroy sketching an old building. And when I was done, I didn't like the building, but I looked down and saw the grapes. And these were, these were table grapes, as I understand, after I talked to the, the guy at the vineyard, because uh, wine grapes aren't this big. I didn't uh, know right. that. Yeah, know. and even the leaves have rust. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, they do. They do. Rust is everywhere. Rust. So rust. did you work from a photograph for these or did you paint right there? Do well, you I, paint I actually outside? sketched these. No, no, these I do a lot of plain air painting, but uh, I could I didn't bring any of my plain air paintings with me or, or, or put these on here, but uh, I do both. Um, my plain air paintings are not as detailed. Yeah, a little faster. Right. Yeah. Because I, I spent a lot of time on these. This is an old railroad trestle in Willow Glen. They were going to tear it down. And uh, good friends of mine got together and stopped them from tearing it down because it's, they were going to make a bike path. And this was perfect for the bridge. So I went down there and I painted it and gave it to my friend. <laughs> It was just a nice old wood. And this is, this is in Aromas, California, one of my favorite little towns. Little is the word. Yeah. It's, it's near San Juan, but if you take San Juan Batista and drive west to Watsonville, you'll get, go through this little town. Well, this barn really doesn't look like that, so I kind of took liberty with it. So tell us a little bit about how you choose the details in the foreground and paint your backgrounds. Yeah. Well, the background with atmos atmospheric pr perspective, the background is always more faded and less detail. You know, if you look at something, you know. Right. And, and the foreground always has more detail. And in, in, in painting, you want the object, the center of interest that you want people to look at. You know, your eye is going to go right to where the detail is. And the sharpest contrast between light and dark and sometimes it's a combination of those things sometimes it's not you know that's that's the way of painting you right. know when, when you see it when you when you see what you want to say then you put it down but you have you have a few rules to follow so the contrast between the roof of the right. barn over there and, and the, the dark, dark shadows the dark shadow you know that's where your eyes going to go right well, those are beautiful paintings. Well, thank you, Sally. Yeah, so you do go out with your plain air set I that do. you were I doing do. your demonstration on and yeah. with watercolors, which that's like brave no. <laughs> to do. No. <laughs> no. It's, it's fun. 
It's fun. It's this. Uh, I'm living the dream. <laughs> well, that's great. Yeah. So tell us where people can see your art and what some of your future plans are. Well, I have a website. Mm -hmm. Are they going to show that? Or? Yes, they've okay. shown it already. I have, I have a website. It's www.soliart.com. And also, I'll be at the Open Studios in May in San Jose in, at the Rose Garden at Margaret Washington's house or oh, site. Nice. Yeah. So in San Jose, is that a group show? Yeah, it'll be two of us. Two of you. Yeah. So two watercolorists. Two watercolorists, yeah. It's teacher and pupil. <laughs> Great. Well, tell us just a little bit about how she's influenced you and maybe what people can expect to see. Oh, well, she, you can see a lot of detail in her paintings, too. You know, it's, her style's a lot different than mine. Well, not a lot different, maybe, a, you know, different, but uh, we both kind of do the same you know, I want to say, I want to say overall gestalt, you know, the, the overall. Does she paint rust? No. Not as much no. as you. <laughs> no. She does uh, people, so tremendous people. Oh, yeah. interesting. She does portraits and, uh, and, and people doing things, you know. And, and you'll be showing your beautiful rust I paintings. Will. I will. Excellent. And are, are they all about the same size that you paint? Yeah. Yeah, I paint on uh, quarter sheets which is 11 by 14. And yeah, it's that's what I'm comfortable with. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I do some half sheet, but not too many. I'm doing one now that's a full sheet. And can people see your art elsewhere other than at the Open Studios? Well, there's a show coming up uh, in Las Gatos. It's the Santa Clara County Watercolors Association membership show. Oh. And that'll be at the Jewish Center in, in Las Gatos. And that's coming up, and if you go to their website, the California watercolor, not the California watercolor, the Santa Clara Santa County. Santa Clara County right. Watercolor Society. Yeah. Beautiful. And I'm going to enter two paintings in the California Watercolors member show in Brentwood. Well, thank you so much for being on Talk Art. This well, was a wonderful demonstration. Thank you very much. <laughs>